I'm going to take a moment to tell a story about our next guest on The Informer. His name is Harry Katsabianis. He's from Kalamata in Greece, at least his parents are, which tells you where the DNA comes from. But he'll tell you if you speak to him, and we're going to speak to him right now, he's Australian, all Australian. He's best known as a, a taxi driver who, when challenged, took the bit well and truly between his teeth. And he decided, you know what, I've got better things to do. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. And he's going to explain to me what that really means. And then he became a public transport operator. This is a guy who was not only smart enough, but stubborn enough, uh, stubborn enough when he was confronted by some adversity, he chose not to take a backward step. He decided to get on the front foot. And what did he do with it? Well, he had an idea and he founded a number of companies, P2P Transport, TaxiLink, Cabot and Ride 247. He understands the taxi industry like very few people in the country. And the thing I want to start the interview with is, which of the institutions gets the most credit for giving him, giving him that drive? Is it his alma mater, Swinburne University, or is it La Trobe? Harry Katsubianis, welcome to the info. Oh, George, thank you. Good morning. Uh, nice long intro, but I had to sell the story. So which one of the two oh, George, gets the, the big they were the both big two, tick? They were both two different lessons. La Trobe University was a baptism of fire as a young boy sort of coming from high school into a um, university and my uh, studies there didn't last too long. So the university sent me home very quickly. And then later in life, I uh, felt I had a gap in my knowledge and that's when I went to Swinburne. But they both taught me some very valuable lessons. Okay, speaking of lessons, we're living in a brand new world that's changing by the by. Yeah? Every day, something new's happening. If it's not the, uh, the Premier of the state reintroducing a, a, a new lockdown in Victoria, uh, it's him introducing safe uh, injecting rooms uh, in the Victoria markets, almost as an exciting idea as introducing Uber uh, into Victoria at a time when the taxi industry uh, had no inkling that they were going to have a challenger. And you were right in the middle of that craft, right in the middle of that business. How did it make you feel that when you thought that all your people you, that are working with you and working for you have a future? and they know what's required of them each and every day, and suddenly the government decides on a whim that they're going to introduce a whole new challenger that's going to revolutionise the industry, and not necessarily for the, for the good. Yeah, George, when we first heard about it, we didn't believe it was possible. We lived in a regulated world where there was protection yeah. from government, rules, regulations and laws. And we should also add, that to get a taxi license in Victoria in the, in the golden days, and uh, for quite some time, you had to pay a license fee. Yeah, they were half a million dollars each. That, that's a huge impact. A lot of money, and a lot of people have been decimated and lost a lot of wealth. Uh, but nobody believed that what was going to come was coming. We would see it around the world, and there'd be whispers and what have you, but we thought living in a regulated country where we have rules and regulations that the government and our courts and the whole environment would uphold. And a Labor government would do that to you. Exactly. Wow. I remember George having the Premier, he wasn't the Premier at the time, he was the Leader of Opposition in our premises in Huntingdale, addressing the industry, promising the industry that he would help him and he would do all sorts of things. And at the end of the day, well, obviously, we all know the results that came out of it. So yeah, it was very disappointing, very challenging, very gut-wrenching. But gee, did I learn a lot. What did you learn? I learned that politics in this country is very dangerous. We talk about corruption in third world countries where people know the price to do business. Where here in this country, we have no idea of what is going on and how it forms. And politicians tell you one thing, you attend meetings, you attend rallies, you're, you're out there, you're learning, you're doing. And at the end of the day, the decisions come down to one or two people that affect everybody's life. What were the things that you took from that experience and have allowed you to keep moving forward and being an entrepreneur? And we should explain. What do you understand by the term entrepreneur? Oh, George, this is a, a, a very a lengthy subject. and a famous subject. You know, people talk about entrepreneurship and today everybody's an entrepreneur. No, no, and we know that's not the case. No. Look, entrepreneurs see the world differently. Entrepreneurs solve big problems. Entrepreneurs take more calculated risks. They've got more grit, more determination. And I believe entrepreneurship can be taught 
as a profession because there's a science and methodology. But what can't be taught is that last bit, which is that, that grid into the dogfight, if you like, that you see, you know, elite sports people or elite business mm. people. Mm. That last five or ten percent is what we can't teach. Well, you're almost telling me that you need to have that bit of mongrel that our top sportsmen and women have. And people say to me, oh, women don't have it. Oh, they have it. Oh, absolutely. I, I can remember uh, playing in a charity game against the uh, the Australian basketball team, the Opals, and the, 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 the Diamonds, uh, the netball team, and they obliterated a team of media boys who thought they knew better. Uh, and, and we were beaten by precision, we were beaten by physical contact. Yes. We had shoulders put into our jaws. We were thinking it was going to be a charity event and you know, a little <laughs> bit, an opportunity to flex our muscle and show a bit of technique. We got wiped off the floor. So it reminded me yet again that, that you don't become an elite sportsman or woman unless you have the, the skill, the, the courage, and a bit of that grunt, that, that, that determination. And, 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 and that belief, George. Oh yeah, you, it's belief. You've you right. got to remember that top one percent of every industry yeah. have got a different belief. They see themselves differently. Well, Alan Bond certainly did. Oh, absolutely. And he's the man that uh, both both uh, embellished the, the the term entrepreneur and also uh, sort of drew dark clouds over it too. But he was a fighter when he was at his zenith. When he led the Australian charge. That, that took down a 107 year or 117 year history of the New York Yacht Club and won the America's Cup for Australia. The whole country changed. Absolutely. And I remember the mood in Australia in the 80s was, you know what? If Alan can do that, we can do anything. Yes. And we started seeing people like you know, Jack Elliott taking, uh, you know, uh, what was the company? Uh, IXL to new heights and new places. So. You, you would have been growing up at that time. Yes, I was. So you would have been thinking to yourself, they can do it. Good Australian boy of Greek heritage can do it too, especially from Kalamata. Absolutely. I had a fear, George. You had a fear? I had fear. You don't look like you have a no, fear. I had fear of failure. For me, Which that, drove you? That was my no. driver and is my continuing driver. All right, you're, you're driven to succeed. I said to early on in the introduction, when you were, you were challenged by adversity, you wouldn't sit still, you kept looking for new ways to turn the, the challenge around and to give you forward movement, which, which allows you then to make progress. Yes. Yeah? Um, what are the sorts of things that you're doing now to, to take yourself to the next chapter of the Katsubianis uh, story? Well, as you know, P2P Transport is um, a co-founder of that, which is a public company, which we've listed in the transport industry. I have two or three other ventures that I want to commercialise. Um, I like to be involved in new products. I get bored with the same product. So give me something new, something shiny that I can sort of add some value to. That's, what, that's my skill. And then taking it to the next level. I, and I being was, involved in the journey. I was hoping that you were going to tell me that you were going to introduce the uh, electric scooters into the marketplace oh, and, uh, oh, George, and that, that's last year's news. It's last, We're last beyond year. electric scooters in this country. <laughs> Hovercraft. They're gone too. Uh, oh my God. Uh, what, so what is tomorrow bringing? For, ta for transport? For transport. It's autonomous vehicles firstly. Ah. Firstly it's autonomous vehicles, electric autonomous vehicles. You've just, you've just um, as rung the bell, the death knell for taxi drivers. Uh, yes, for the actual driver yes. So they wow. need to be skilled in a different capacity. So we're going to have autonomous vehicles that are driven by electricity, then autonomous vehicles driven by solar. And people will look at us and they go, you burnt fossil fuel to generate energy. Our grandchildren will laugh at us. Mm -hmm. And then from there, somebody will say, all these streets are congested. And they're gonna look up and the sky is there. So the drones and these flying helicopters will be the norm and that'll be transport in the future.